Good morning and welcome to Courageous Church. We are so happy that you're joining us this morning. Today is an exciting day. We are celebrating what we call Multiplication Sunday. This is a day where we remember the, the commission that Jesus gave his disciples to go and make disciples and to carry his gospel, the good news of his death and resurrection of salvation, to carry that throughout the entire world. We celebrate the birth of the church, how it exploded and began to, to just spread throughout the entire known world, how it, it turned the ancient world upside down. We, we celebrate how God's kingdom has multiplied and we renew ourselves to the commitment to multiply as Jesus' disciples. Multiplication Sunday as a church plant uh, is super exciting because we are living in like the fulfillment of this calling. We are living multiplication, right? Like we are a church that is multiplying. We were sent out of a church as that church multiplied. He gave us a calling and a vision as a church, in case you didn't know yet, to be a church that helps raise up and send church plants and new ministries that equips leaders to become who God made them to be so that they can multiply. To make the sorts of disciples as a church that can go into their workplaces and know how to live as a disciple of Jesus and multiply. Multiplication is a huge concept in the Bible. So happy Multiplication Sunday. I wanna to start today off with telling you a little story. I remember as a teenager at one point, standing on the corner of a busy intersection and there were cars as far as I could see. It was about dusk and I could see the, the headlights stretching out in one direction and the taillights stretching out in the other. Um, and the way that the horizon was and the streets were, I could just see really far and there were just more cars than I could count. And in that moment, it's like God quickened my spirit, spoke to my spirit to, to pay attention. And I looked and I just was struck by the vast number of cars going past me and stretching out in front of me. And God gave me in this moment, this realization that in every single one of those cars were people that would either spend eternity with God or apart from Him. People that either knew God or didn't. People that had either heard the gospel or who hadn't. And each one of these people was dearly and deeply loved by God. And in that moment, God was giving me a burden for those who didn't yet know him. I was so struck by all the people going by and the vast number of people before me and how much God loved every one of them. And did they know them? Who, who Did they know God? Who was going to tell them? And then it's like, in my mind, I zoomed out to realize like, this is one intersection in this city. How many intersections and roads are there? How many cars are there full of people zooming by in their daily routines and that aren't even aware that God loves them? Beyond that, like this is one city in this nation. This is one nation in this world. How many people are there in this world? And each and every individual one of them is loved by God. Who will tell them about him? And over the years, this was a continually re this was continually reinforced in my spirit, like the persistent beating of a drum hitting my heart. Do they know who will tell them? Whether it was on a mission trip, loving orphans, spending time with refugees debating with my science teacher about there being a creator <laughs> as a teenager, <laughs> uh, hugging and praying with the, the outcast that no one else was willing to touch, or being a friend to the friendless, 
It was like a song on repeat. Someone has to tell them. Someone has to love them. They have a father who loves them and they need to know that hope is possible. Healing is possible. Whatever they've walked through, freedom is possible. Forgiveness is possible. Intimate saving relationship with God himself, with their creator is possible. And as I look around, as I walk streets, as I like just go about my life, I see them. I'm aware of the crowds around me, of the individuals around me. I see them searching, trying to fill their life with whatever things they hope will give their lives purpose and fulfillment, whether it's relationships, material possessions, different religious options, whatever it is, entertainment, their jobs. They, they fill themselves with just whatever they think will give their life meaning and joy and peace. And I see them coming up empty. There is so much more than what this world has to offer. This is such a burden on my heart. But have you noticed that many times what we feel most burdened by, most passionate about, what we feel the most sense of like, someone needs to do something about this, like that oftentimes that's what God calls us to step into. You see, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I've been given the gift of evangelism. It's like a steady beating in my heart that never goes away. When I walk down the street, I wonder who needs Jesus and who would be ready to hear about him if someone were to just have the courage and the love to have a conversation with them. I wonder who the people are that have calling on, callings on their lives to be leaders in God's kingdom, but don't even know who he is yet. And I pray that God will use me, that God will use you, that God will use Courageous Church to reach them, to love them, to share God's truth with them. But multiplying, making disciples who make disciples and planting churches that plant churches, equipping leaders that are sent out into the marketplace to have influence in God's kingdom, to reach others, all of this work requires a whole lot more than just a few passionate evangelists or a few people who are called to be pastors. It takes all of us. And your gift may not be the same as mine. And if it's not, that's actually a good thing because you are called to be a uniquely gifted multiplier a uniquely gifted disciple maker. Today, we're celebrating Multiplication Sunday. We celebrate the birth of the church. We gather today, we remember the command of Jesus to multiply. And when Jesus filled the disciples with, with his Holy Spirit, on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 believers came to faith and were saved in one day, he then enabled those believers to become a multiplying church. And every disciple in that birth of the church was to be involved in multiplication. No disciple standing there when Jesus gave them the command and said, go and make disciples. Not a single one standing there would have heard, hey, yeah, discipleship. Go find the people who are already following me who already believe in me and teach them how to follow me better. Like none of them heard that, right? They heard, go and make disciples, go find the people that don't know me yet, go tell them, teach them to follow me and teach them to go and do the same and find the other people who don't know me and teach them to follow me and share the hope of the gospel throughout the entire world. So every disciple was meant to be involved then and now. But he designed his new church to be a body with many different gifts that operated in unity. Every part needed to operate, but every disciple 
is supposed to operate according to their unique design. As long as we're comparing ourselves with others' giftings, it's, it's not productive. The Bible talks about that. You're not excluded from this design. Let's look at Romans 12, verse four through eight. It says, just as our body, just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing different things well. So if God has given you the gift to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. You, disciple of Jesus, are uniquely gifted. God has placed you in this church for a reason, in this city for a reason. He has placed you in certain spheres of influences with certain gifts as his disciples, to as his disciple to help multiply his kingdom. So think about right now. Right now watching, some of you are detail-oriented people. Right? You take just tremendous joy and satisfaction in seeing that beautiful color-coded spreadsheet. Okay, if I tried to do the things that you are good at, if you watched me try to do those things, you would likely cringe. Same things with uh, those of you who just enjoy numbers, who just think they're fun and fascinating, fascinating, who do math problems in your mind just because you enjoy it. Uh, okay, the world needs you in order to function. It truly does but I can't be you. What is your unique gifting? Are you gifted at serving others? Are you that person that sees the need no one else sees and just loves quietly filling it? If so, God gave you that gift for a reason. He gave you that gift intentionally and it's beautiful. Are you good at teaching? Are you a leader? Do you find tremendous joy in giving generously, whether you have tremendous financial means or not much at all in this season of life? Has God made you generous? God designed you to operate this way on purpose. You have a place in his kingdom. And part of that is taking part in multiplication. You have a calling, you have a purpose. You have tremendous gifting. And when we say you can be involved in the call Jesus gave us to multiply, we absolutely mean it. Let's read about that call. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, he could have followed that with anything. He had literally all authority in existence. <laughs> and he could have followed that therefore with anything. What was he going to tell his disciples at his last command before he left this earth and sent his spirit? He could have said, I've been given all authority and on in heaven and on earth. Therefore, listen to this style of worship music. Therefore, go to church on Sundays. Therefore, anything. It's sometimes we can put, we can make other peripheral things more important, but, but what did he say in this moment? He said, go and make disciples. And of who? Of all nations. 
This includes people who are different from you. Politically, racially, economically. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You were made to be a uniquely gifted disciple maker, a uniquely gifted multiplier. You know, saying yes to planting Courageous Church didn't look the way that Tim and I would have ever expected. We, if we would have guessed, we didn't get the timing right. Uh, we didn't get, we wouldn't have guessed the location right off the bat. We wouldn't have guessed what exactly the church would look like. We wouldn't have known who our team was. We certainly wouldn't have thought we would be planting digitally in a pandemic when we said yes. Sometimes saying yes to the call to multiplication doesn't look the way you expect. And there can be a lot of unknown involved. Like if I say yes to start sharing like my beliefs more publicly, if I step out and start sharing the love of Jesus and stepping outside my comfort zone, whatever that looks like, getting involved in a greater level, like in a church plant and serving, like there's some unknowns. And it won't look the way you expect completely. But I challenge you today to say the obedient yes. And God will help you learn what that looks like. You may be the person listening right now who is called to plan to church yourself someday. You may be someone who eventually joins a church plant launch team that, of a church we send out in the future. Right now, you're a part of a, a church plant team right now. If you're part of the Courageous Church family, you're helping start a church right now and you're taking part in multiplication right now. God may be asking you, if you're not someone who's going to go and plant to church someday, He may be asking you to give generously in order to, to help facilitate churches, to equip church planters and send ministries and equip leaders and to be able to train disciples. You may be part of providing for the work. But everyone can be a disciple maker. You have gifts that can be used in starting, as we're starting a multiplying church. And as you are being equipped to become a uniquely multiplying disciple, imagine what it could look like if we had an entire church of people that were committed to discovering who God made them to be. That were committed to discovering, God, how have you gifted me and how can I use this for your kingdom? If we all stepped out in obedience, can you imagine a church operating with all the beautiful, unique giftedness that God has given every member of the body? The people who are good at hospitality, the people that are good at serving, the people who are good at generosity, the people that are good at teaching, the people who are good at evangelism, the people that are relational connectors, those who are courageous enough to invite people, those who um, are, well, are welcoming, who can be the person when someone walks in the door, when someone engages with us online, can be that the person that just welcomes people, the person that can be that caring ear that just sits and listens and encourages, the person that just has the right words to say and the right moment that people who have gifts of worship and music were so uniquely gifted and varied in our giftings. If we all really stepped into those giftings, Bible says that our giftings are to build the church. If we stepped into that to build this church, everyone of us stepped into our gifting in order to build courageous church. Imagine how well we could love our neighborhoods, our city. Imagine how well we could share God's truth. Imagine the lives that could be touched if every disciple embraced being who God created them to be and used those gifts to serve others.
As you go from this time today, I want you to reflect. What spheres of influence, of influence has God placed you in? Is it a network of people that you know? Is it social media groups that you're a part of? Or a social media platform that you're really good at engaging on? Is it your workplace? Is it friends like other parents that your kids interact with or, or coworkers, fellow students that you take classes with? What spheres of influence has God placed you in, whether digital or in person? And I wanna challenge you to ask God to show you, if you don't know already, what gifts he has given you and reflect on what is the next step that you need to say yes to in order to say the obedient yes to being involved in multiplication, to being involved in building God's kingdom. Now, the next series we're going to be going into as a church is about spiritual gifts, and we're going to talk about that. So if you have some questions in your mind about, I, I don't know how God has wired me, gifted me to serve, like I'd like to get involved, but I don't, I don't really know what my gifting looks like. We're gonna be talking about that, getting into your questions about spiritual gifts. It's, it's gonna be great, so that's coming. If you're not in a discipleship relationship yet, both being discipled and discipling someone else, both of those are vitally important. That's how multiplication works. Someone makes a disciple who makes a disciple. You need to have someone pouring into you and you need to be pouring out to someone else. That's the biblical model. If you need help with that, Ian can help you get connected in with that. If you need a practical resource, there's a book called Missional Essentials that talks about um, the way to just live out our faith practically in our world, what it looks like to embrace multiplication in our world. I highly recommend it. Maybe your next step is just having the conversation, inviting that coworker over for dinner, inviting that person to have coffee with you, asking them how their life's going, and asking God to give you the opportunity and the wisdom to share the hope that you found that could encourage someone else. We're also starting as a church, a group called Marketplace Multipliers. And for those who are really passionate about learning, like are really curious about learning about, hey, I'm a believer in the marketplace. What does it look like to live as a Christian in the workplace in a way that connects with others in a way that naturally and relationally opens the door for spiritual conversations? If you wanna learn more about that, reach out to us. Fill out our connect card and we, we're happy to, to help you step into this. And in this next season going into the summer, we're gonna have some serving opportunities for you to practically put those gifts into action. So this week, church, pray. Ask God for creativity and for courage. And I challenge you in your next time of prayer to ask God and write down a next step that you can take to, stay in, to say an obedient yes to being involved in multiplication, both in your personal life and in stepping to being a part of this church body so that we can, we can build up and multiply God's kingdom through the power of His Spirit together. I am just beyond thrilled to be here with you today. I love each and every one of you and the Courageous team is praying for you. Have an awesome week.